All right, if you'll turn your books to the chassis exercise, the drawing looks like this. We're going to uh, focus on the, the pocket here, and I guess the whole locations as well. There are a number of good ways that we could approach this, but we're going to do it a different way. We're going to use this as an exercise in connecting and duplicating geometry. So let's get started. Uh, we have a block that is four inches wide, seven inches long. I'm not worried about the cleanup on the ends yet. We'll get to that when we create tool path. One inch thick and our origin is the front left corner. So in Gibbs Cam, I'm gonna go to the document control dialog, make sure I have this part saved and create a new part called chassis. And on my part size or stock size and part origin, the maximum X is going to be 7. That's the right edge of the part is at 7 inches. The left edge of the part is at 0. The back of the part is going to be at Y4. And the front edge of the part will be at Y0. Our Zs will still be 0 for the top and minus 1 for the bottom. I'm going to save an X out of here. And I'm going to go ahead and create my vertical and horizontal lines. Now again, I want to emphasize this is not the best way to do this part, but it makes a really good exercise in connecting and duplicating. So I've got vertical lines starting at X a quarter and then three quarter and then just following these numbers over. And then this line here will be at six and three quarters uh, due to this quarter inch typical wall thickness here. And then our horizontal lines are going to start at a quarter, and then three quarter, and then three and a quarter, and three and three quarter. And then we'll put that together to make our pocket. So back over to Gibbs. Let me open the geometry palette. I'm going to draw lines. I'm going to use axis lines. I'm going to go to vertical, and I'm going to start at a quarter of an inch. Shift enter to get into multi-feature mode. And then just following the numbers across the top of the drawing, we have three quarters, two and a quarter, two and three quarters, four and a quarter, four and three quarters, six and a quarter, and then as we mentioned, the last one is at six and three quarters because we're maintaining a quarter inch wall thickness on both ends. Switching to our horizontal lines, our Y values, we're starting at the bottom at a quarter of an inch, and then three quarters, and then three and a quarter, and then three and three quarters. And these are the lines that comprise the pocket shape. Now in connecting this up, there's one thing that we haven't discussed that needs to be taken into consideration. If you look at this line here, well, let's look at the, at the Gibbs. If we look at this line here on the drawing, there's a piece of that line right here, another one here, another one here, and another one here. Uh, the same thing applies to this line. There's a piece of it here, here, and here. And then all of these vertical lines, you've got one here and then a matching line down here. When you have that sort of situation, you want to make sure that you finish one segment of that line before you get to the next one. In other words, we want to finish this segment before we ever get to this segment. If we're not careful, we can end up with a situation like this. If we start connecting this up, everything looks good so far, but when we make this connection, we end up with a rectangle, not really what we were looking for. But we had already defined this line as having one end here connected to that line, and without the other end being defined, we uh, over here we defined this line as also being connected to this line at this location. So let me undo that. If I simply move my start back to here, back to this intersection, and that allows me to finish this segment of the line before I ever get over here and I don't have any problems. Now it is important with something like this with a lot of crisscrossing geometry to work your way around in, a, in an orderly fashion. Don't jump back and forth from one end of the part to the other. Now we, for lack of a better term, used up these two lines and we need them back. So I'm going to highlight that one, hold down the control key and highlight that one. And then I'm going to duplicate. You can go to the modify duplicate uh, button or the shortcut key is control D, which is what I'm going to use. So click, control click, and then just still holding the control key down, I'm going to tap the letter D. And that gives me two unconnected lines, or it gives me another copy of each of the selected lines that is unconnected. 
Uh, but if you look, we still have our connected line underneath here as well as the one underneath here. So with nothing selected, I find my last connection here and just move on to the next intersection and work my way around. Now this is probably about as much of it as you need to do. I'm going to go ahead and duplicate those, click off in space and continue though. Uh, or maybe you want to finish the, the top side of this. Here we need this line back, but not this one. So I'm going to highlight this one and duplicate it, click off in space and continue on. I'm going to go ahead and finish the part. Uh, but this is probably as much as, as I would want you to do. I just want you to get a feel for connecting manually and then duplicating the geometry. Now, when duplicating, it's important uh, not to hold the control D down. Uh, just hold the control key down and tap the letter D because if your keyboard repeat kicks in, uh, you could end up with multiple copies of it. Now, here we need these vertical blue lines back to use down at the bottom. So I'm going to hold my mouse over here hold down the shift key and drag a box that only gets those blue vertical lines in it and then control D to duplicate them. I'm going to click off in space to deselect everything. There's my last connector and I'm just going to start or pick up here and continue on around this. And you see this is a little bit tedious compared to a lot of ways, uh, a lot of things that you do in Gibbs Cam, but it's really not all that bad. Uh, it takes, you know, two or three minutes to, to work around this whole thing. And if you don't get the shift key held down, you'll end up zooming in on nothing. Control U unzooms the screen and, and fits the part back to your screen. So Control D to duplicate, click off in space, go to your next connection and continue working around. We're almost done. I need this one back. And we have the shape connected. Now to put in our chamfers, I'm just going to hold my mouse cursor here, hold down the shift key, and click and drag a box that gets all of these inside corners. Uh, I'm going to go to my chamfer button, select chamfer, type in 0.1, and just hit enter. And there's all my chamfers. Now for the fillets, I would probably in real life just drag four selection boxes like this around. Just hold down the shift key and drag four individual boxes. But just to show you another control that you have that is very handy sometimes, I'm going to hold down the shift key up in here and drag a box that gets all of these chamfers that we just created in it. And then under the edit menu, I can invert selection, which just reverses the selection so that anything that is selected becomes deselected. Anything that is deselected becomes selected. And that is another way to get all these outside corners selected. So I can go back to my chamfer button and do fillets and 0.28 radius and hit enter. And there are our radiuses. Now for the whole locations, this would not be a bad way to do it with the uh, uh, the matrix or the rectangular array. We would just be doing a an array that is you know two two wide, starting at y a half inch, and the holes are three inches apart. And starting at x 0.5, we're doing four columns that are, if I will remember the drawing right, yeah, two inches apart. And that would be one way to drop the whole locations in. Uh, another way would be to simply drop them in with the mouse. Since all of those holes are at half inch increments, I can set my grid to half inch. And then as long as I'm within a half inch of the location, it's going to drop it in to the correct location. So what I'd like you to do is to you know, create your basic part in document control. Uh, create a, a piece of material that is seven inches long, four inches wide with the origin in the front left corner and draw this pocket uh, or draw uh, the lines for this pocket and connect up, you know, at least, you know, to here, uh, maybe go a little further around if you finish up quicker. Um, or if you're feeling real frisky, just go ahead and go all the way around. 
Uh, but let me show you a couple of easier ways to do this. Uh, I'm going to undo way back, all the way back to where we started. Might have been quicker just to draw the lines again. So another way starting from here we could have done this would have been to go to plugins and contour trace and then just walk around it. Say I want to start here, I want to go to there, go to there, go to there, and then just we're walking around this. Don't be concerned with the shape that you see in red until you get finished because at each step, every time you click, it's trying to close out the shape as best as it can based on what you've clicked up to that point. So just make sure you click firmly on each line. Make sure that it registers. And then when you click on your last piece of geometry, you should see the shape that you're going to get in red. And then just say create. Remember, this is not actually connecting the shape up. It's creating a new shape based on what you selected. The yellow geometry is your construction geometry. Typically, you will delete that. And then we would just come in and put in our chamfers. And our fillet radius is the way that we did it before. Um, another thing that we could have done would have been to draw lines with our mouse, set a quarter inch snap grid, and find a place to start. I'm going to start at X a quarter, Y three and a quarter, and I'm going to come over a half, up a half, and then come over to two and a quarter, down a half, over a half, up a half, come over to four and a quarter, down a half, over a half, up a half and a half is just two jumps of that line. Uh, then we're going to come over to six and a quarter, down a half, over a half, then come down to three quarters of an inch in the Y. Over a half, down a half, and then come over to six and, uh, sorry, four and three quarters, up a half, over a half, down a half, come over to two and three quarters, up a half, over a half, down a half, come over to three quarters, up over and then back to where we started and that would be another easy way to get that basic shape. So let me go ahead and finish this out since I don't believe I saved it when it was complete. Uh, so I'm going to put in 100 thousandths chamfers and I'm just going to drag four selection boxes and switch to fill it, type 280 and then I'm going to draw points with my mouse half inch grid and I'm just dropping them in in the order that I want to drill them in. All right, so if you finish a portion of this using the connecting and duplicating, then just delete what you've got and draw it with the mouse or using uh, the plugins and contour trace to finish out the, the shape that you've got started. Uh, and then uh, make sure you save this. We will be putting Toolpath on this tomorrow.